90 to 275 and now it is changed to 90 to 700 GSM. We are the first company in India to produce higher coating uh, galvanized steel. And why only JSW can produce? Because right now uh, POSCO can also produce in India with higher coating products. What are the challenges? Why uh, there are 45 lines in galvanizing lines in India? Why only two lines can produce? POSCO is designed to produce higher coating. JSW steel is designed to produce 275 GSM coating, but still we are producing 700 GSM coating. So the challenges are non-uniform coating across width. So for that we have done some changes in our lip gap profile. And one more problem is generally with higher coating is edge over coating. We have a very good baffle, edge baffle system uh, to overcome this problem. And uh, surface ripples or cloudy surface is optimization of bath chemistry we have done. Coating addition is the one challenge with the higher coating product. And uh, pick up on the first APC is also very important because uh, higher coating takes more time for the solidification. Now, one more challenge is the product economics, like cost of extra zinc or cost of rejection. You see higher coating products, once it gets rejected, it will not go to the uh, normal use and it's additional cost. So how we have done in JSW is we have addressed all these issues and could launch uh, this product. E uh, to show some example, I'll show you, uh, we have done some changes in the edge baffle system. Earlier we used to use a uh, narrow thickness edge baffle. We have changed for the wider width edge baffles. We have done a uh, study on the coating profile. Generally what happens is once you produce 275 GSM and if you increase uh, uh, coating, uh, you'll end up in the invert U type profile. So by changing some changes in the lip gap profile we have done and we could optimize this uh, coating profile. You can see it's very close to the requirement. After pot cooling is actually designed to get uh, uh, produced galvalume. So this line is equipped with very good uh, cooling uh, APC. So you can see the temperature is achieved 230 degrees centigrade with what, 550 degrees centigrade. Improvement in surface finish. You can see this first coil which is shown has got a bit cloudy surface. It's a lot of improvement in here by doing a lot of uh, changes in the bath chemistry. And what are the products? And uh, both commercial and structural grade with the minimized spangle, regular spangle, zero spangles also we have produced. High durable products, not only for the solar applications, uh, we, we can use it for the culvert or uh, drain pipe. Yesterday there was some discussion on the uh, drain pipe, why galvanized material should not be used for that. We have already supplied to some export uh, clients uh, for this uh, drain pipe application. Industrial ducting, solar panel mounting and lot of high, highly uh, corrosive marine ap applications also we have given. And as rightly told by Mr. Uh, actually from Tata, uh, Tata Solar, he is not there now, so Tata Power. Uh, what is governing that is the ISO 9223 uh, atmospheric uh, severity specification from C1, which is a very low severity, up to CX, which is extreme uh, offshore ocean. This just shows you the uh, corrosion rates of zinc under each of these atmospheric severity classifications. You can see it's uh, many, many times less than the corrosion rate of steel. This is why zinc is protective. It's a much lower corrosion rate material in any of these environments, no matter how severe than steel. And uh, this guides us, this ISO 9223, to uh, select the correct coating thickness for zinc for the given environment. We also know that zinc uh, protects steel. We talked about that before. And this is the uh, selection guide from ISO 14713. We have the different types of zinc coatings on the left side. Hot tip galvanizing, sheet, tube, sheridizing, which is an iron zinc coating, thermal spray, which we'll talk about now, electro-galvanizing and mechanical plating. You can see the uh, thicknesses in the third column. And it goes from a durability of very short in severe atmospheres to uh, very long in the uh, more mild atmospheres and the relationship of that with coating weight. So here, uh, so th th this is just the guidance that helps us in selecting coating thicknesses and how to anticipate coating uh, uh, lifetimes in each of these environments and with these different processes. So I was asked to make that reference here. 
We uh, thermal spray process, uh, which is these uh, case studies, are uh, using the two-wire electric arc spray process. We are uh, uh, bringing two wires together that you can see one's got a plus sign, another's got a, a minus sign. These uh, make an electric arc, uh, you know, the jet of air, and it sprays the liquid sink uh, spray towards the substrate, the steel, where we are really uh, making a, a, a spray uh, uh, accumulation of the zinc coating. Uh, this is from our member, uh, uh, IZA member metallization. They produce a two-wire arc spray. Uh, it shows the uh, kind of uh, deposition uh, rate, 36 kilograms per hour, uh, and that is using the 2.3 millimeter diameter zinc wire with a depo deposition efficiency of up, of up to 75% and the kinds of bond strengths they're getting with that. Flame spraying is another process just for completeness where we bring in a combustion uh, 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 fuel together with oxygen and we flame spray the surface in the same way. It's a little slower than the two wire arc spray because of the uh, feeding of one wire rather than two, but it is used widely, especially in places where you can't get electricity. Th thermal spraying compared with painting, uh, it requires no cure time. The zinc just solidifies and you're ready to go. We can uh, use it outside uh, as long as uh, uh, over, under wider ranges of temperature and humidity than paint because the paint has to cure. And uh, even when we have uh, damaged coating, of course, we have the sacrificial protection of zinc. It's better for a friction grip uh, to the coating. Uh, adhesion to steelwork is often better than paint, and uh, we can also use it as a substrate for paint if we uh, need to, or if we use it by itself. These are typical uh, uh, metallized uh, coatings. There's pure zinc, zinc 15% aluminum is widely used, and then we have aluminum, but aluminum always has some porosity. So the first case study that we have here is on the arc spraying of the uh, gas cylinders. These are for either propane or the liquid uh, petroleum. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is now in uh, large scale series production. These are uh, produced in uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, lots. So these are first shot blasted with a chilled shot, a hard steel shot at uh, 50, 550 kilopascals, or an aluminum oxide grit can be used. And then within three hours of shot blasting, you have to thermal spray it. Otherwise, you're, go you're going to uh, lose the fresh uh, steel surface. And it's, it's uh, rather typical to spray on between 130 to 250 microns of zinc. Uh, and that's on the, on the base, on the bottom, which, is, which can see some standing water or other conditions. And elsewhere, uh, on the vertical sides of the tank, we can see the, uh, uh, the, the 50 to 200 microns. And that is then top coated with at least two coatings of paint. So many of the uh, gas cylinders you see are protected in this way. So there's just some pictures showing the um, Blast cleaning, this is set up as a, a series production by our uh, case study submitter here. And this shows the hanging of these uh, 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 cylinders onto a paint line they go through for their painting. Second case study they wish to share with us is on the ductile iron pipe. And here this is a spray coating of ductile iron pipe. This came out uh, from the UK water industry a few years ago. You can see this is in uh, 2006, revised in July, uh, I'm sorry, it came out uh, June 1984 and revised in uh, 2006. And uh, they, they started using ductile iron pipe uh, with a uh, thermal spray coating between eight uh, of, of about 100 microns under the conventional bitumen paint. It was rather normal to use a bitumen paint over this water pipe, but uh, they were having problems in soils, they were having problems with uh, installation damage, and uh, they wanted to uh, reduce the risks of external corrosion on these uh, water pipes. So this is now being widely used, and our uh, submitter here is doing this. Here shows a typical uh, uh, setup. You've got the uh, ductile iron pipe, it's got an oxide scale, you then grit blast it, you put on the uh, metal sprayed coating and then the bitumen uh, paint over that. Uh, so that's been used actually in France since 1961, in the UK since 1984, and now in India it's uh, come up and, and being used as a, a new application for thermal sprayed zinc. Also, I just want to mention the Indian Railways rail. This is uh, our friend Mike Ainsley, and he's out here in the 40 degree sea weather in a black suit, and he's uh, showing us the uh, uh, study, study sections with Indian Railways. We've uh, been spraying the web sections of the uh, railway rails. Uh, in many sections of Indian Railways, the rails need to be replaced not from mechanical wear, but from corrosion. And uh, so the, uh, the, the metallizing with zinc of the, uh, of the web of the railway rail is a way of extending the life and, uh, and to get it up to a more satisfactory uh, period of life. Uh, those studies continued and we are working with Indian Railways to uh, bring this to a normal large scale production. This shows uh, Rahul out there uh, checking uh, the uh, thickness of the uh, coating. 
Uh, and the final one is the arc spraying of uh, reinforced concrete surfaces. This is used to uh, provide a sacrificial anode for the rebar that is inside the concrete. In many cases, aged concrete, especially uh, concrete that's been out for some time, has uh, uh, been saturated and the rebar inside is beginning to corrode. But we can extend the life and protect the rebar inside if we thermal spray the surface of the zinc coat of the rebar with a zinc of the reinforced concrete with a zinc coating. The oldest project that I know about with this was uh, built during the Great Depression in the uh, USA in the 1930s. They had a so-called concrete bridge project, which uh, provided a lot of employment and uh, improvement of business. So over 120 large concrete bridges near the sea on the Pacific Ocean were built during those years. Those uh, eventually aged and needed to be rehabilitated, and many of them have a thermal spray zinc coating over the entire concrete structure that you can see here. So it's not the uh, concrete color, but it's actually the gray zinc, and these are expected to serve as anodes to the rebar inside these older bridges for another 25 years. The final one is just about the wind turbine towers. Uh, in many cases, these are offshore. Uh, these are getting thermal sprayed. There's uh, thousands of these out in the German North Sea and other locations, also in China. So I've seen thermal spraying of these towers in all of these countries, and it's a very important new application for the metallization. So with that, I'll close. We had several case studies that our submitter wanted to bring to our attention. Thank you very much. Uh, perfect timing. Dr. Goodwin. I am now going to hand off the microphone to Dr. Goodwin while they ponder. So what I wanted to do is just spend about 10 minutes on an, an organization that I, cre I helped create uh, about this time last year. And we called it uh, the Indian Sheet Steel Building Group. And in my opinion, and based on all the work I've done, all the interviews I've seen, I think this is really the key to unlocking uh, galvanized steel growth, particularly in the construction market. So uh, I'm going to skip all this because you've seen this. We've created a logo uh, and a website, which you'll see later. But here's what the uh, ISSBG is, is all about. It was created, like I said, in June last year. And it's been modeled after a very successful Canadian institute called the Canadian Sheet Steel Building Institute which has been operating since 1961. I've been associated with the CSSPI for over 20 years, so I know how effective the organization is, how effective it is in dealing with architects, engineers, specifiers, code officials, and, and of course, the public. So the membership is unique. It's made up of uh, steel mills, building product manufacturers, pre-engineered metal building companies, even, ma even the, the guys that supply the fasteners. So mission is very simple, increase the awareness and the use of sheet steel in construction. And then IZA India uh, acts as the secretariat for this organization. So the focus is basically building codes and standards development and uh, also commission some research because there's a lot of engineering designs where we cannot calculate how to particularly transfer loads into the foundation. So we, we undertake research, and it's mainly done through universities. Cheap labor, students have to get a, uh, a master's degree typically, and they need a short-term project. They're very incentivized to finish on time so they can get their degree. We, of course, get, provide the steel, and we get the results, which we can then implement directly. Uh, the other part of it is to uh, develop technical fact sheets, provide technical support to architects, engineers, and all these people. And we heard earlier in the session the desperate need there is for this type of stuff because we saw architects, we saw consulting engineers asking us in a general way if this information was available. So it's going to be, it's going, I'm very excited about the creation of this thing because I think it's going to solve a lot of our uh, current bottlenecks. Um, we're, uh, the, so IZA India is now uh, a full member of the uh, BIS, Bureau of Indian Standards, the MTD Committees uh, 3 and 4. We've written, uh, rewritten the I-277 galvanized standard. It's due to come out uh, shortly. And uh, we're in the uh, group that's developing the new automotive standard for, uh, for uh, automotive grades of galvanized. Um, seems like I'm going backwards again, okay. 
So one of the things we've done, and we've heard several people say, you know, we don't have any information on how long galvanized or zinc uh, lasts in particular environments. So what we did, a year ago I started um, a, uh, a corrosion test program. The last program that was conducted in India was over 30 years ago and they can't even find the reports. Uh, so in, we all know that in 30 years galvanized has changed. Coating control is, is much tighter. Uh, obviously the composition is different. And so what we've done is uh, we've taken Indian produced galvanized steel and 55% aluminum zinc coated steel and we've, uh, uh, we've exposed them at five different locations within India. And then what we'll do is after one, two, three and four years, we will remove triplicate samples of of these uh, panels at each of the five sites, I will then calculate and produce a algorithm that follows the, this, the equation that you see there. And then we will have this information to share with anybody and everybody that uses uh, this information on galvanized steel to design particular lifespan structures. So this is a, a, an in, a, a really vital part of the whole program. Uh, five product areas involved. Uh, we're talking about steel building products, as we call them. So that's anywhere from roofing, cladding, decking, that sort of thing. Lightweight steel cladding, which is typically used in the agricultural market. Pre-eng buildings, and as well, framing. So here's some typical examples. I'm just going to rapidly go through these, uh, just so that you know we're talking is steel framing, not, not a big... Uh, not a big uh, use of it here in India right now, but it's really big and growing. It's 95% of all the commercial uh, high-rise residential and multifamily dwellings are built with uh, steel framing. It's non-combustible, right? So here's typical fact sheets that have already been produced. We had our meeting, our second meeting last Friday in Mumbai. And I shared with the group uh, the fact sheets we've already prepared on solar reflectance, fire and acoustic performance, enhanced paint systems, white rust, transit uh, corrosion, and many more. So we've also got sustainability information developed around steel. We have a great story to tell uh, on all these subjects that you see there. So I just wanted to leave you, uh, here's a, a a, a screenshot of the uh, website uh, with the technical library that's currently in place. It's going to be uh, it's going to be built on obviously as we go forward, and uh, we've got a great team. So all this is going. Why are we doing all this? Because we think this is the uh, one of the key ways to increase shipments of zinc coated steels for the construction market. And based on our calculations, you know, there's seven million tons of of new coated steel shipments. Uh, when you consider all the, uh, the market segments in play here. Um, so here's, uh, here's uh, I guess, what I'm trying to publicize, which is the, the Indian Sheet Steel Building Group is alive, it's well, it's one year old today, or this month. Um, it's uh, making good progress in developing information. We're starting out on construction and will evolve into the automotive market segment. Membership is open to all you folks that make sheet steel, so it's, it's basically a sheet steel product. And I want you to check out this website because you'll be surprised. Uh, and I think uh, you may find some of the answers uh, that, have, uh, that you've been asking and, and interested in. So I'll leave this up on the screen. So hopefully I've, uh, I've tweaked your attention. Uh, we're going to go back now and, and uh, what's the program, Ruchika? Are we going to present the... Uh, Recognize speakers from this afternoon session. In that case, uh, I'd like to uh, present the momentum to Mr. Dinata, who gave an international perspective and also invited us for the event that's happening in 2016 for all the galvanization industry. So, um, I request Mr. D'Souza to present the momentum and let's give him a big, big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We have the momentum for Dr. Frank Good, uh, Goodwin, sir. Thank you so much. Always a delight to hear from you. Always a delight to learn from you on the aspect of zinc, 
and it's a sense. Once again, a big round of applause. And yes, as we go ahead, we had the case study from Mr. Vikas from KEC International. Can we have the momentum? Yeah, we have these certificates here. I request uh, Mr. Candy Souza to present it to Mr. Vikas from KEC International, which is a part KEC International, which is a pioneer in transmission lines. So just so you know, it's a certificate of participation for the case study presented and it's customized to reflect Mr. Vikas's company. So congratulations. Big round of applause. And we have it for Mr. Praveen Kumar Mabian. So thank you, thank you so much for Mr. Praveen Kumar from JSW Steel. And so this, uh, the mementos also need to be presented for the case study presentations. Mr. Souza, if you can do the honors. May I request Mr. Vikas and Mr. Praveen to come forward so that uh, we can have a, a great photo of movement with you also, sir, there, with Mr. Souza. Sir, please come forward. Here we go. Sir, here, here in the beginning, for front. May I request uh, Dr. Goodwin and uh, Sir, please come forward and join the moment. With and the with the awards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mementos. With no award. Thank you. And yes, a big round of applause for our chair, Mr. Uh, Ken D'Souza, sir. Thank you so much for leading us so meticulously with the time constraints, with all the wonderful sessions uh, and presentations that we had lined up. Thank you so much, speakers. Thank you so much, chair. Thank you very much. And yes, as you all know, a refreshed evening is in store with the hot tea and coffee and uh, snacks being served across the table. Ladies and Please come forward. And we have amongst us Mr. Rajesh Mohata, our CMO for Hindustan Zinc Limited. Rajesh, sir, once again, welcome back. We start the day with you as the moderator. We, have, we are going towards the last session with you as a panel discussant. An interesting couple of days, that's for sure. And I think that uh, what I've heard is that it's not problems, it's opportunities that await us here. And uh, so what do you think the biggest opportunity is in this big market? The opportunity is endless and huge. And last two, yesterday and today, were two great days of learning. And uh, what I feel is there's a huge communication gap between the industry and the decision makers. It's for the industry to come out with a techno-economic solution to India's infrastructure problems and present it in a way which is uh, acceptable and it will be a huge win-win situation for the country and for the industry. India is on the cusp of a huge economic growth in the infrastructure. I come from railway sector, and railways is for huge growth. For example, our Honorable Prime Minister has a vision that uh, every railway station should be world class. Similarly, there is one dedicated freight corridor project costing about 15 US billion dollars being executed right around us. So industry should take advantage of all these uh, mega projects around uh, going on in the country and uh, understand the problems which will the uh, the sector will, uh, the infrastructure would be facing in the country and come out with a viable solution okay. thank you uh, there is a great opportunity i am adya prasad executive director uttam galwa steel uh, there is a great opportunity of uh, galvanizing industries to educate the people uh, and uh, give them the information uh, about what uh, all about galvanizing, its uh, lifespan, life cycle. Uh, as people are getting awareness, the, the, the consumption, the amount of demand is increasing day by day. We are producing around 750,000 tons of galvanized every year. But we still are in the process of adding further galvalume and color-coated uh, products. 
if if i remember i mean yeah, if i recall 2003 2004 when india only uh, one or two industries were there for galvanized color coated they were able to sell hardly 3000 tons of uh, color coated sheets because there was no awareness in the people now uh, uh, there are too many um, color coating lines coating painting on galvanized uh, sheets and everybody is uh, selling 5000 tons uh, in indian market apart apart from uh, exporting and uh, i mean actual users so there is a great opportunity for zinc uh, association and galvanizers as a, as a whole to propagate and uh, educate the people for the use thank you yeah good evening everyone i am cs singh from tata steel i am from the procurement division uh, last two days the what i have been hearing from the all eminent speakers here in fact it is really also surprising to me that in the flat as well as in the long the galvanizing industry in india is really lagging in fact it is really surprising to me only a very small percentage of the cars or automobile that we make in india are galvanized whereas uh, all the automobiles which are meant for exports they are adhering to the international standards and being galvanized and also on the long product front because uh, we are also making lot of tmt bars for construction other purposes we are never really focused on galvanizing the product till yet uh here i would also like to uh, state something because uh, going forward when we talk about galvanizing especially in the automobile sector which is a niche sector you know there's a approval for each component of the automobile takes long time so there are multiple like uh, components in a car so maybe about uh, 100 to 110 components where the approvals requires lot of time it takes about uh, average about one years what you have seen so in fact we we are the pioneers in india to set up this continuously galvanizing line and we are the only one in india till now who have been using continuously galvanizing grade zinc which is specially meant for the automobile sector but uh, the growth that we have seen or the demand that we is existing in india is not much in fact over a period of time we have been able to establish our product with nearly all the car makers in india whether it's tata motors hyundai toyota and they have recognized our quality and the galvanized product that we produce on long product i will say yet because see uh, in tata steel group we have got uh, long product plant in india as well as in my nat steel tata steel thailand where we are making a lot of ready made construction steel which can be what we have seen in the presentation that you can just get the steel on the site and start construction very fast but uh, none of the places still now we are doing any galvanizing but yes we have initiated the process there is in thailand we have put up a uh, one plant there we are going to galvanize the long product and in india also we are uh, putting up a uh, plant with the help of uh, some external provider in nagpur where we'll be we uh, will be galvanizing this uh, long product tmt wires where this uh, plasma coating method where we'll zinc will be coated in a vacuum so these are the some product we are introducing in india and and of course because the kind of interactions on the information that is available it is very important to tell the people or disseminate the information that galvanizing is better for the product because today also we see uh, like we have seen earlier we had a just a product called agrico our product used to sell in the market let's say for fowla is 160 rupees where a person can get 30 rupees so we used to tell them why don't you buy a tata product they say <laughs> i need employment today immediately i do not really look for such a long term commitment of the product but yes today going forward the kind of infrastructure that our country is looking for and the government is committed we must ensure that the knowledge that resides with us are communicated very clearly to the customers 
so that they are well aware what is the advantage of using galvanized product compared to other product. But see, we are also, we have done a lot of work on the uh, TMT wire rods for corrosion resistance while alloying, copper additions, other things.